Welcome to Project Power. Our goal is simple. The next evolution of the human species. You ever taken one of those before? It can make you strong. It can make you invisible. You never know what your power is until you try it. Hey, hi. Hey, Deandra. Hello, hello from Malaysia. Fish. Fish. I love Malaysia. I've been to Malaysia. I've been to your, your caves. Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm all right, how are you? Yeah, all's good over here as well. So I watched the movie over the weekend. Uh, I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I watched it like twice or three times. Congratulations! <laughs> so you, in this movie, you play Frank. Could you just bring us through the type of uh, character he is? So this is a story about a, a pill that's taken over the streets of New Orleans that can give you superpowers, but you don't know what power you're gonna get. It could be good or it could be terrible. It could kill you right off the bat. And uh, I play a detective in the New Orleans Police Department who's trying to figure out where this pill is coming from and, and get rid of it because it's wreaking havoc. I play uh, Biggie. Biggie is a salesman. He's the, uh, the main representative of, of power. A visionary uh, guy who really trusts his vision and wants to expand, bring the product all over the world. They like to call him the villain. I like to call him just a guy doing wrong things. What was your first reaction when you when you read the script? Well, even before reading the script, I read that Jamie Foxx and Joseph Corey Levitt were already attached to a film. So I was like, well, what's this? Let me not get too excited. But uh, I was so surprised and happy to see the character of Robin. She already had so much going on on the page. We knew who she cared about. We knew what she uh, who she loved and what she wanted. We knew her dreams. I think there was this one line in the movie that it, I think it really stood out. It was it was quite wow, you know. They think they can just test their product in my city. You know, there's an unfortunate history in, in the city of New Orleans. I mean, it, it's it's got a dark history. That city is it was at one point the center of the slave trade in the United States hundreds of years ago, and and so this story, while on the one hand it's a thrill ride, on the other hand you can appreciate it on another level that asks questions like who does have power in this world and who doesn't have power and why and is that fair and it can spark some pretty serious conversations if you let it. Actually one of the scenes that really stood out for me was the uh, fight scene at the club. So your character towards the end of that scene did you know it had like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of moment or maybe the Hulk. <laughs> what was it like playing him? It was a very interesting uh, process. Um, I don't want to give spoilers to, to people, but uh, he does go through a transformation, a very long uh, makeup process. The chemistry between both your characters, and I, I thought it was really, really good. Um, the emotion, the sass, you know, the back and forth banter. Did you two just click right away when you did the table reads and all? Well, I'll tell you like this, Dominique just has so much talent. She came and blew us all away. But at the same time, we clicked. You know, we, we had a real connection. And then once you get that, that makes the movie really feel magic. Well, Jamie Foxx, I've been a fan of his ever since I was young. And I mean, incredibly thrilling. He's a huge part of why I wanted to do the movie in the first place. But then I met Dominique Fishback, ladies and gentlemen, anybody out there who's a fan of movies, a fan of acting and actors, this is an incredibly talented young artist who is gonna have a long career ahead of her, I'm sure. I can't wait to see what she does next. I've always been a, f a fan and, you know, admirer of, of uh, Jamie's work and, and Joseph as well. Very down to earth, humble and, and very accessible, uh, both of them. So throughout the movie, I couldn't help but notice you're wearing the Gleason 37 NFL jersey. First of all, people of New, York, New Orleans love the Saints. The Saints is their football team. And Steve Gleason was, uh, was a player. He actually had a tragic accident and was paralyzed. He's managed to really rise above the challenge and do a lot of good in the world. He does all kinds of work and, and he's really become a symbol and, and a hero. Who is your favorite superhero of all time? I gotta be honest, he wasn't the superhero, he was the antagonist. Killmonger for me <laughs> took me to a whole nother nother. Cause I ain't never seen nobody hold that much weight in his speech at that end. He took me on out. Killmonger gonna get it for now. You know what? I like Deadpool. <laughs> I love the 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 comedy, the dry humor that he has. I love that he's not necessarily like the hero. He's probably like the anti-hero. I like Iron Man. He's he's very you know human and and 
I love, you know, uh, the work of uh, Robert Downey Jr. I might say Neo. Is he a superhero? Not exactly. He's some sort of like special messiah. He's the one. I don't know. Is that count as a superhero? I dressed up as Batman. There's pictures of me. My mom sewed me a Batman costume when I was a little kid. I like Mighty Mouse. Neo, Batman, Mighty Mouse. We're gonna end this. It's time to rise. It's time to rise.